All right, and welcome back. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a slideshow using AI. I'm gonna show you all my favorite tools and tactics of how I go and create all the slideshows, not only for certain presentations, but even when I take on stage, I'm gonna use all the different tools. I'm gonna to show you how not only I create them, but what AI tools I prefer in order to do them. All right, so if we're looking at the screen, you can use whatever AI you choose, whether it's ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, Grok, it doesn't really honestly matter and you can create the content in these first, and then I like to move them over to other software to basically create the slideshow. I'm gonna take you to two of my favorite that I really do enjoy working with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some mock data using AI, so then I don't have to really think about it, but let's make believe we are basically creating a quarterly business review presentation that you would be using for your work, your job, or even for your own personal company. And what I'm gonna do in here, I'm literally gonna say create mock-up data for a presentation for a mock-up company that would be the business review for the quarter. Create some charts and make it visually pleasing. Now, I'm doing this in Claude with the understanding that I know Claude is gonna generate the slides uh, and also some other ones will also generate some slides, but then I'm gonna show you two other softwares that actually are really intended for slides that do a really good job. But let's go ahead and do this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and we're gonna give it a little time to think. So we're gonna pause the video while this happens. So you could see just on the right hand side because we're using Claude, Claude has the, an artifact system which automatically starts creating these slides. Now the slides it's creating is basically in what we call HTML, which is a web language that's gonna give it colors, formatting and all of that. And it's obviously making a lot of this up. If you were using your company, you would be putting in the details of what these things are in order for this to go. So your prompt would basically be create a presentation for these particular numbers for a quarterly review. And then you would give them very specifics on what you wanted to present or any details. And then from there, we're going to see what, uh, what Claude produces, but then we're also going to take this and add it to some additional other ones. And I'm going to show you how sometimes I take examples from one and then I kind of change the formatting and give it a different prompt so then I can import it to another software where we're going to do additional slides. So pretty cool. It did kind of a very website-ish looking uh, kind of presentation. It made its own revenue lines and trends and customer growth um, and it said key insights and strategics. I'm going to say um, great but let's add more context to each of the numbers to present a story on why they are what they are, all right? And we're gonna let it cook again. The reason being is I wanna give you guys more of a robust example. And I also want you to understand that the way it did it is it made it an interactive website, which is cool, but in necessarily in a corporate situation, I'm gonna need these in this actual slideshow format. So again, why, it does a really good job of giving me the visuals and all that, but then I'm, I am gonna ask it to um, give this to me in a format that I can copy and paste and put it into a different slideshow, which again, we're gonna give Claude its chance, and then we're gonna go ahead and move over to the two other softwares that I recommend doing at this point in time. Now remember, the game is always changing. There's millions of these softwares out there that can probably do this now. Um, I just prefer these two because one, I have subscriptions to both. They both make me happy, and a lot of the presentations that uh, I normally use are from those other two softwares, and I do go interchangeably back and forth uh, to be very clear, uh, but to, we're gonna do that right after this presents it, and then I'm gonna kind of show you how I kind of cheat a little bit and ask it for a different prompt to use in a different software. All right, it's it, it really did a nice job, and it gave me even better trends and all this other stuff, great, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna say, this is great, but now I want to export this to another uh, slideshow can or you know a slide deck can you just give me the details for all these slides per slide right because what we want to do is we wanted to break it down so i can literally get slide per slide action and then let the other ai and these other um slideshow abilities do that 
Uh, and look, as you can see, it's going to go on the right-hand side, creates another artifact that's basically going to have all of this for us, right? Um, and then we're going to leverage this, and we're going to put it in yet another tool in order to do that. While this is go ahead and doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to open up another tab. We're going to go to Google, and I'm going to take it to my first tool, which is called Gamma uh, AI, and it's for presentations. Now, again, I like I've, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of them that do this now, but this is the one I prefer. So I'm going to go to the one that says Gamma App. Uh, and I'm going to come over here and just click on it. And then when I click on it, uh, you can get an account. I believe I pay $20 a month for, but as you can see, I have tons and tons of presentations in here and you're going to see how cool it is. Now, um, I'm going to do a quick little overview. I don't want to get too much into the weeds in this because I want you to explore and do it a kind of on your own. But the simple part of it is you have, um, the gammas, gammas are what they consider all the presentations. There are templates you can create, themes, custom fonts, settings, and members that you can add uh, basically on your team uh, that you can literally invite up to a certain amount of members. But when you do invite members, just understand your billing will change. Uh, API keys that your gamma API keys uh, basically are coming in. The reason why this is pretty cool is, is we're going to be able to then create presentations based on input coming from uh, different AI automations and everything else like NAN and all these other crazy ones that are out there right now. What's really great is that you also have custom fonts. You can upload a font family, so then you have a specific font for all your presentations. Themes where not only you can select the theme that's there, but guess what you can do? You can also customize your theme, which I've done here for myself. You can also import a theme from PowerPoint or I believe Google Slides and will automatically come in. So if you're working for an organization that has a particular theme that they're very diligent about, you can go ahead and do that. Inspiration, if you want to see the different kinds of, uh, a, you know, like presentations that people have done um, and templates that are out there for quarterly reviews, ironically enough, um, you know, calibrate uh, uh, collaborations and projects. And I'm, and I mean, honestly, the list goes on, right? And you can do a bunch of AI images, pre-create them prior to getting through. Now you can see some of them that I've created over the last few months. Uh, and then you can also have sites that you can create and, uh, and access them there. Don't really use that. You know, obviously there's better, um, you know, kind of things out there for them. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to Gammas. And again, I do have a pro account. You can explore different options. The, um, they do have a seven-day free trial, I believe, or a 14-day. It does change every now and again. But you can go ahead and just click on it and have it tried. But what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and you can create one on your own and use the regular formatting features like you would like a PowerPoint and, and Google Slides. But honestly, what's the fun in that? So we're going to create a new slideshow and you have one where you can import a file and it can uh, enhance your existing docs, presentations, or web pages. You can generate uh, from one line prompt, meaning you will actually write a prompt and it will figure out the rest. Or what I always like to do because I like to develop my slides in another AI and then bring them over just to make sure I have everything that I need and I like the presentation the way it is. And then you can just basically copy it in here. And what's really cool of it, not only can you copy it in here for presentations, you'll also do a web page just like we saw in Claude, a document and even social media uh, where it will create presentations and slides uh, and, you know, little like kind of wording and posts. But it will also give me the images because it does have the ability of creating AI images. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. Remember, we made this already. So that's why I like using a third party software in the AI space to really work on my slides. And then when I have everything that I want after reviewing them, then I just copy and paste them when I'm ready. So I'm going to hit copy and notice that this is a total of uh, we're going to say 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23 slides. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to presentation. Now, notice that it will also talk about uh, default where it's fluid or traditional. We're going to go with traditionals because we're going to probably be in the corporate setting. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the entire slideshow in here. And then I can do a generate from notes or outline, which is what we have selected. Preserve this exact text or summarize long text or document where it's going to shorten the amount. Now, if I was going into quarterly presentation, I would probably have to do this where it's more of an exact. Also understand there are limits on the amount of slides you can prepare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve the exact uh, text. I'm going to hit continue to prompt editor. And even though we're going to do that, uh, you're going to notice that it's already kind of like understanding that it's already mating, making different slides. You see how it's already got it broken down based on what we gave it. The uh, the thing that we're going to do is we can also select, um, you know, preserve the content, the uh, language, uh, language, the English language is their output. 
the theme. Uh, you have all predetermined themes. You can also view more uh, and you can do other selections. If there already is uh, uh, AI images or you leave that AI images on and will automatically pre-create. Uh, and then you also have uh, image art style, like you, we want photo, illustration, abstract line art. There are some uh, kind of create, you know, kind of choices out there. And then you have uh, add extra words, add keywords like minimalism, minimalism, colorful, and so forth. Uh, I'm not going to put any of these on, but just know that you can. I'm going to just actually let this thing kind of do its thing and, and see what happens, right? So again, also understand that the text in here can can be that and then the card by card format is there. Just remember usually the for, the the limit of the cards, I believe the most I think I was able to do is 30 at a time. I know that is honestly changing very rapidly uh, where you can put even more and there's obviously the length and tokens, there is a limit of 10,000 tokens. So will this do 150 page presentation? No, but it will get you pretty darn far, right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit generate and you're gonna see how cool this thing is. It will generate card by card. It's gonna add uh, graphics, it will add charts and I'm going to show you how to quickly edit in these things just in case you don't like any of the thing that is presenting uh, and we'll give you a few little insights on there and talk about the menus and everything that we see. All right so I let a little, little, little time pass but you can see it's coming in here and it's showing uh, the different revenue curves and everything else. Now what's great about this is is that at any given time if you don't like anything that it does but let's just kind of go over all of it uh, it created it, you know, made it very simplistic. Uh, it created its own thing. Obviously, like, again, you would come in here and you would start replacing things. Now, what's great about uh, these particular uh, slideshow kind of like softwares that are out there now is you can click on it and down here, you can ask AI to redo the image. You can edit the image and put in your own, put in your own prompts based on what you're really looking for. You can also come in here and import web search images, grab them from, you know, put GIFs in, do whatever you want, and you can even add and change colors into gradients and all of that. Now, what's really also good about this is, is that you can come in here and you can add and duplicate cards, do whatever you want, and over on the right-hand side, you have basic blocks. Here are all the different things that you basically can drag over. Call out boxes, caution, success, buttons, toggle, uh, code blocks, math functions, table of context, dividers. You have images, all the different image sources that we just saw before. You have smart layouts, you know, put it into boxes, three columns, do whatever it is, smart bullets, uh, sequences, images, numbers, stats, uh, you know, bar charts, circle charts. You can have all this, quotes, speech, circles, you name it. Uh, we also have smart diagrams, so you can do all the crazy smart diagrams that are in there now. Uh, so for instance, if you wanted to move in this road, you would do it in here. You can come in here and ask AI to create it, or you, and you, again, you can come in here and, and change it differently, edit the icons, the color, add before and afters, delete, you know, it doesn't really honestly matter. But, uh, and you can also ask AI to, hey, change this to reveal or say these things and do this thing. Uh, you know, again, whatever it is, I just want you to show. And then if you don't like it, by the way, you click on the three little dots, hit the little trash can and boom, it's gone. Now you can also add slides, come in here, add from a different template, uh, you know, kind of a long bullet form, arrows, pyramids. I mean, this thing is insane. You want to adjust this right here. You click on it, want to delete it, add an item before or after, change the layout, trash it, come in here, double click to change little wording in here. Uh, create timelines, graphs, you name it. You can even come in here and again, use AI and, um, well, actually you can come in here and you can change this, but you can also click and you can go through it and you can change the layout and you can go on the right hand side and it gives you some smart layouts of what you want to do. Again, if I wanted to grow like this, see, it automatically changes it. How cool is this? that the fact that you can do so much, and remember, it generated this on its own. It kind of like put the uh, information together in the way that it's gonna be presented. Uh, and again, you can add charts and graphs, videos and media. If I wanted to add another graph, I would come in here and I would say like a donut chart, and I would put in all the different types and would automatically add it. So you have the ability, and good, and these things are also interactive. Again, and if I don't like it, I come in here and I can just delete it. You can also click and there's short commands. So literally it can just hit my delete key and it works off also. Uh, and again, embedded apps and web pages, like you wanna bring in uh, an entire website, you wanna bring in an Excel spreadsheet, you wanna bring in a Google sheet, you totally can by using the embed commands. And again, it's super easy. The other great part about this is you can come in here and 
you can basically share. And in the sharing options, you can actually export to a PNG, a slide, a PowerPoint. Now, sometimes you do have to kind of fix this, but then you also have LinkedIn that it can automatically post to. You can view analytics of people coming in and watching it. You can ask others to collaborate. I mean, do you understand how incredibly awesome this is? And I don't know if you even saw that, but you can actually publish this to a site, give it a web address, and people can just check it out on the web. You can come in here and hit present, and look, it gives you a full presentation mode, and you can go back and forth with the slides just like you would a normal PowerPoint. Probably one of the best softwares I've come along for this in the last two years or so, but I really do believe it is quite magical and really, really good. Now, the other one that I also will tend to use and will literally use the same format is GenSpark. Now, the only thing with GenSpark that I will caution you on is that GenSpark is not a US-based company, so it does not follow the regular governance rules. So you gotta be really careful to understand data governance rules depending on where these things are built. There's a lot of uh, companies that are built in countries that do not have a data governance rule, which means that the government come in and grab all the data. The, the company itself can sell all your data and you really don't have a say in it. So again, when creating these things, make sure you have the utmost right, um, you know, understanding that a lot of this uh, situations are, uh, are not data protected and you wanna build on things that are data protected. Now, Gamma is a little bit differently. It is based in the US. They do have uh, govern, uh, privacy laws and everything else. So you are already limited for exposure there, but always double check before you activate any tool because you wanna make sure you're following the rules. Now, GenSpark is the one that I use. Again, I don't put anything in here that is incredibly vital or that is secretive because again, this is a one that's based on those countries that does not have a data privacy law. Uh, and therefore, it, you have to use your own caution. It asks you to connect your Google Drive and your, your Outlook and all that. I do not do any of that. I use this basically for ideas and generating content, but I never put actual you know, private information in, in this tool specifically, just because the, the governance of this is, is not good and uh, all my stuff can be out there if I let it. But considering this is all Mac up data, what I do here is I come in here, AI slides, uh, inside of AI slides, I come directly in here, I can hit control V, I hit enter, and it automatically starts building the slides based on what I want. Now, again, I'm gonna give this some time so you can, can go ahead and see this. I will say between Gamma and uh, GenSpark, while GenSpark does it really well and you're gonna see the quality, uh, Gamma gives you way more options and is just solely designed to make presentations. So it is my go-to, uh, but you saw me also build it in Claude and I gotta be honest, you can go to Gemini, you'll create an artifact. So there's a lot of things you can do and some people honestly just take the presentation and copy it back and put it back into Google Slides. Google Slides and Gemini is also gonna be developing something similar, so be on the lookout for that. So again, it doesn't really matter which ones, just know that these are capabilities that are out there that you would wanna use. All right, now again, in here, as you can see, sometimes I use this, but it doesn't give you as much creativity to like move things around uh, and kind of go on there. So like meaning it does do a pretty decent job. It does present really well. Uh, again, I prefer Gamma just for the simple fact that's able to do that. But as you can see, you now have ways of creating presentations regardless of which tools you used. I show you two, there are many, uh, but again, the way I like to do it and the way the presentation that I kind of just shared with you all and the presentations I have been sharing are all AI created. I use either Gamma or I use this particular software. Um, and again, I just go through. Again, just be cautious of which ones you use. Know that Gamma is going to have a lot more abilities. Here, you're going to be a little limited on what you can do. They do have editing where you can just go back and forth with the editing. Sometimes GenSpark does take a lot longer to get the slides completely up. But these are two that I actively use, and I recommend either or. So again, use Claude or any um, AI that you want to do to create the presentation. Uh, use Gamma or GenSpark to make it really nice. Uh, Gamma has more options, GenSpark is a little bit more limited, but either way, it does a better job than I would normally do trying to create it on my own. And know that Google Gemini and other tools like Google Gemini are also coming along with Google Slides. Google Slides also has uh, a base ability in how to do this, but it is a work in progress. They are getting better and better. I still think out of all of these, Gamma still is kind of winning the charge on this one. And again, if there's any other tools that are out there, that's good, but I wanted to give you a quick little introduction to these, and I hope you enjoy this one, and we'll see you in the next one.